Hello everyone and welcome back to uh, what's hopefully gonna be a short video. So this is uh, an add-on to my how to get more performance out of your XMP profile uh, video. Because now I've spent some time, um, actually I've spent like three and a half hours on this. Uh, because I kept running the full stress test after every timing adjustment. Um, but anyway, so I've now uh, done some manual overclocking on uh, the same uh, memory kit that I tested beforehand. Uh, I still have, well I have a different graphics card now as you can see, but that doesn't affect the test. Uh, CPU is also still stock, uh, like 8700K stock speed. Um, the only variable again is RAM. And what you can see right here are the timings ended up with and uh, yeah, the completed uh, test mem5 stress test. Uh, this is just the One Asmus V3 profile. It's pretty quick, as you can see. It only takes 13 minutes, um, though it takes like a bit longer if you have slower memory. Like it, the speed of your memory shortens the test because it's faster. Um, so most people would probably prefer to like run the like extreme profile on this, which takes like several hours to complete. Um, which honestly, I don't really feel like investing that time. I stress tested my daily overclock in my daily system with this exact profile and I've never had a blue screen ever, like not even a crash. Um, and I have been running that, th those settings for like well over a year now. So for my purposes, like I, if, if this, if my settings pass this test, I would be willing to daily that. Um, yeah. And like you, you can just manually modify the profile to make like ten cycles instead of three or something. Then it's still gonna like it's gonna be like an hour long. Um, but yeah, I like if you wanna run the extreme profile, fine, do it. I I think it takes too long and I don't like it because of that. But anyway, um, so let's talk a bit about uh, our timings here. So this is now a sort of uh, manual overclock. So, um, we are still at 4400. I tried a bit to like bump it up in frequency, but at 4500 I couldn't hold the TRCD I have now. Um, so I chose to, to leave it at 4400, um, which is still like very decent frequency. Um, and my primaries are 18, 16, 16, 29. So before it was 19, 19, 19, 39. So, um, Cast latency didn't go down that much, but the rest went down uh, quite a lot. Um, and uh, if this wasn't a Z270 motherboard, I think my cast latency would also be at 16. Uh, it's, it's a thing I've talked about before. Um, this motherboard is on the older side, which means it's optimized for the A0 PCB. My RAM is on the newer side, which means it is based on the A2 PCB and that causes some incompatibility that can lead to all kinds of things like you just lose a bunch of frequency or the memory training is really weird or sometimes you have some memory timings that don't go as low as they probably should be in which case uh, yeah that's what I got my my cast latency like this is BDI it should do the same cast latency as TRCD usually like in most cases like BDI is kind of known for doing like flat primaries um, in this case, like it doesn't even post at uh, CL17. Like that's how hard it was. Uh, I've tried RTTs. I've tried heating voltage. Uh, it does not post at CL17. As at least I can't get it to post. Um, I'm sure there's some way, but I'm not good enough at uh, memory overclocking to do that. Now TRCD and TRP uh, went from 19 to 16. That's actually pretty good. I think that's like, so if you use the um, very rough napkin math of just taking your frequency and dividing it by your TRCD, I think you get a value of 275 here. Um, that's quite a lot faster than my daily. I think my daily is at like 257. So that's some really, really tight TRCD right there for that frequency. Same for TRP. I think my TRAS is also quite a lot uh, tighter than my daily. My daily is 3600 and I have a TRAS of 26. Um, and uh, yeah, also the like these are all maxed. I cannot set these any lower. It will error actually quite quickly. Um, command rate still two T. I've tried one T. It does not post. Um, again, there's probably some magic you can do, but uh, I'm just not good enough. 
Uh, TWR, I just shamelessly uh, copied from uh, one of Boltzoid's videos. TRFC is actually a bit higher now, so I've had it at 300 before. Um, which, like, you know, it, it gets through time spy and probably fine, but like, after, like, in the test, after a few minutes, I would get like one or two errors at 300. So I set it to 325, and now that uh, goes without any errors. Um, it could possibly do like uh, 315 or even 310. That's like the one place where I think I could still go a bit uh, further, but like, the RFC is a three digit timing. It really shouldn't make that big of a difference. Um, TRDL actually went down to 4. I've had it at 6 before. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I guess the reason why all my test bench setups did uh, 16.4.6 for T4 and RRDs was actually my RAMO, uh, my CJR. Um, because this beta kit runs 16.4.4 just fine, just like the beta kit in my daily, which also runs 16.4.4 just fine. So, I guess if you have beta, you can pretty much always run 16.4.4, even on a motherboard that's not even optimized for the PCB that your RAM uses. Um, WTR, also just shamelessly copied from a, from a Bullseye video. Those can, like, those can probably go a bit lower. I just copied these because I had them on auto before, and I have no idea what kind of things I should set these to. Same for RTP, and uh, I think CWL and RTP are actually still on auto. <laughs> I don't know about RTP, but C CWL probably is still on auto. And then I also maxed out TREFI. Uh, so TREFI is a bit of a special timing because uh, better performance is when this is higher, not lower. And uh, 65535 uh, five, five, uh, on some boards 65534 five, is just the highest you can set this to. Uh, you can only set this on Intel. AMD does not have this adjustable. Um, but yeah, like the, this is like the time you can have before refreshing, and like the less you refresh, the more time you have to do other things. So setting this to the maximum, usually best performance. Uh, you can't always set this to maximum on my CGR and on this beta kit, it is stable at the maximum. But um, yeah, it, it it really depends. Um, yeah. But anyway, so let's run Time Spy again and see about our performance. Um, I've actually haven't tested this yet. Um, so I will be... Uh, I'm hoping to see a big difference. I, I did actually already see kind of an indicator, because like how I talked about how the uh, test takes less time to run if your memory is faster, and it, it was like... I think it was like 15 minutes... Oh, come on, really? Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> uh Yeah, so that, that that's a problem. Um I'll make a cut real quick and put the 1070 back in because apparently we actually need that one. Okay, 1070 is back into in the system. <laughs> I forgot times by needs a uh, certain DirectX level. Like even though we're just running the CPU test, you still need like a graphics card that can support the GPU test too, which is kind of stupid. But th that's what you get for running a uh, mainly graphics-based benchmark to test your CPU. Um, though we did see that it like scales pretty nicely with the memory. Anyway, um, I went through the BIOS real quick so you can uh, see. I mean, I've already showed you the timings. Here's a quick rundown. Just Pause the video if you want to uh, copy that. Also, I noticed like some of these don't actually apply the way I set them. Um, but yeah, and uh, for voltages, so 1.55, that that's upped from 1.45 for the XMP. I don't know if it actually needs that high. It might be fine on 1.5. But like it's B die, it has a fan blowing over it. 1.55 will be just fine. And then I actually lowered my I/O and SA. The XMP profile sets both of these to about 1.38. Um, I set them down to 1.3. Um, the board does overvolt this uh, quite a bit. If it's under load, it still goes to like 1.35 uh, under load. Um, and yeah, basically. Like, as far as I know, you can just yeet SA as far, like, basically up to 1.65. But I owe you wanna keep under 
and like 1.35 for daily, which is basically why I set this because like then an under, like with 1.3 set in BIOS, under load it will put out 1.35, and then for SA just yeah I just kind of put the same because like yeah you can set this really high but um the only reason to set SA really high that I know of is if you do like either really high frequency or like extremely tight timings under LN2. So, there we go, finally. Hopefully performance is right now. Oh yeah, oh we're hitting 80 FPS for a bit. Oh yeah, this is so much faster. Yeah, this is so much faster. Staying at 30 in the end, we were at like 27 before. Yeah, this is so much faster. Come, give, give, give me a good score. Give me a good score. Yes, 9000! Oh, that's actually so much higher. That's... Wow, that's over 600 points. Just like that. Is that a bigger difference than... It almost is. It's almost as big of a difference as it is from stock to XMP. Wow. That's cool. So. That is one heck of a score. Damn, I'm really happy now. So, this is the kind of thing that this is the kind of yeah, this is what you get from a, like, I'm not gonna call it properly, but, like, this is a pretty well-tuned B-Die kit now. Like, the secondaries could probably go down. I haven't even touched ter tertiaries yet, except for this one. Um, but, like, yeah, so, uh, let, let's do some really, really bad math again. So, divided by, what, what did we have, 8, 3... I have to check OBS. Also, you can't see the scores right now because time spur is in the way. Um, 8389. So that's a that's all that's only 7.4%. But like that's without CPU overclocking. That's like just RAM, 7.4%. That's probably a bigger difference than just getting a better CPU. Like if if you have like a um like, let's take a modern example. If you have, like, a 12700K versus a 12900K, getting the 12900K over the 12700K is probably less than a 7 point, like, well, it's like, technically a 7.5% difference because we can round up. Like, getting getting that better CPU is probably less of a difference than this. So, yeah. And then we had, and then... XMP was stock was eight a one five two by seven seven four nine four yeah so it's a, yeah so it's like a it's like an eight point eight difference JDEC to XMP but like yeah actually let 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 let's let's make it look a bit better for ourselves. So 7015, let's just take the normal XMP, not the tuned one. So 8152. That is 10.6%. So, um, if, if we just ignore that middle step where I slightly tune the XMP and just go straight from XMP to uh, full overclock. Yeah, um, doing manual overclocking on this is a bigger difference than going JDEC to XMP. So, I guess I can be um, pretty satisfied with myself today, uh, because that that is like that's a two-digit difference now. Ten point six percent that you can just get out of your memory kit. Like, admittedly, I spent I spent a couple hours on this, and I did bring some beforehand knowledge into this. 
Um, but like, this is the kind of thing I want. I went into memory overclocking because, like, you you, you remember all those videos. Like, I I, I used to believe them. Um, you know how how people take like oh do high RAM speeds actually matter? And they take like a bunch of high frequency memory kits set into XMP and then compare, and then it comes out, oh, it's like a 2% difference. This is why I went into RAM overclocking, because that's not true. That's not true. The XMP is only one half. You need to manually tune your RAM. That's why BDI kits are like so good and also so expensive, because they have that manual tuning potential. Like, like every RAM kit has manual tuning potential. But like BDI, like BDI does high frequency, it does tight TRCD, it does tight TRP, it does tight um, TRFC, um, it, it does seem to run a 16.4.4 for T4 and DRRDs, which my CJR didn't. Like, yeah. Straight up, going from XMP to manual C is a bigger difference than leaving it completely stock compared to XMP. So that's cool, I guess. Um, this is also the first time where I actually measured how good, I'm, how good I am at memory overclocking. I, like, yeah, I, I actually never did a benchmark on how fast my daily system is with like the RAM overclock. I think I ran a little bit of Linpack and it was like, okay, it's, it's like, all right. Um, I should run time spell on my daily system to just see how fast that one is and like how faster than stock percent um but yeah now i can put 10 percent extra performance into the thumbnail that's pretty cool and i think i'm rambling on at this point so um this is what manually tuning your ram gives you it's a lot um, so if you have some spare time and are willing to uh, learn the hard way to sort of like me like RAM overclocking is not very fun. I I'm gonna be straight up about that. Uh, memory overclocking takes a lot of time. You will have situations where you're like 10 seconds away from finishing a test and then you get an error and you might not even know what that error is from. Like, you could do it the way I did, it's just like literally every single time you change one single timing, run the full test, which is extremely time intensive, and only took like, like again, like three and a half hours for me, because I kind of already know what beta is supposed to look like. Um, but yeah, like, uh, there is a lot of extra performance to be had in RAM overclocking, and this video proves it. Um, so that's cool, I guess. So, yeah, uh, thank you all for watching, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed, and until next time, goodbye.